posse de bola. Well, the fourth ball is dispatched over the same mid-wicket region. I must correct myself. It's not Fletcher. He had the ball in his hand. But it's the left arm, Larry Edwards. It was Larry Edwards. Left arm around to cut net. And this one, short of a length. And it is down the track for Ned. And boy, haven't he signaled his intention. Six. Well, it was somewhat of a widish delivery this time. And he was not able to get any leverage of width onto that one. And, um, interestingly, he packed a cadre of feelers on the outside there. Straight to delivery. Back down the ground. Past the middle of it. Goes into the boundary four runs. Where the serpent breakers, they are beginning to break. Grounds here into the Rangers. They are 10 without loss into the first over. In adjustment there as Captain Keswick go across to have a hold with Larry. The, uh, Larry Edwards is also a familiar face here in the region. Well, is he stumped? Is he stumped? They're going upstairs for a referral. I think the keeper Salvan Brown may have missed the first opportunity. And um, not too sure. So uh, a bit of mixed bag here. Let's start. So an appeal for stumped. Let's see. They're going upstairs. Waiting for that replay. Ed will know his fate. A, a shortish delivery that was into the ground. And it was down the track. to be reviewed here there you go not out signal third umpire or can I get to live another life oh yes at that point that point you should have taken the bills at that point I think he did broke this the stump but didn't bills in the fall He's down the track, and boy, isn't Kader taking a toll to the left armor? And he's enjoying him so much that he's dispatched that one for six more, 16 without loss, into over number one. Great work there. He loves using his feet. Um, it will be interesting to see the comeback that Ari Edwards will finish the over with. And um, pressure back on to Larry Edwards. Well, it's in the air this time. He should be taken. Can it drop? Drop there by Kenneth Demba in the mid-wicket region. Well, well, well. Very surprising because Kenneth Nimber 
prides himself as one of the best feelers we have around. And it's, it appears that the sun may have been in his eyes there. Because he appears to have lost it at the last point there. See in that replay. Somewhat lost it there. Yes, just at that point. 19 for 1 at the end of the first over, as we see Kimali Williams will take up the attack there from the from the Bequi end, that is. Equin, strong right arm fast bowler. He's uh, been playing now for the Botanical Garden Rangers for the past four editions. Well, three and now this one. Away. Past the man there. Or the wildish third man. It goes into the boundary this time. Total goes up for 23. And interestingly, um, Rickford Walker have not even faced a delivery, and all 23 runs have gone to cut in head from just seven deliveries. Into over number two. Very brisk and start here. So a lot of patrolling now is taking place by Captain Keswick. Remember, he's in the power plane. He's only allowed to have two feelers on the outside. It's about the deep square and the fine leg. Let's place the feeler. It's not what I call a French cut. The ball playing between the legs of the batsman. So at this time it brings Rickford Walk on strike who have just been ball watching from the non-strikers end. Out loss into over number two. We're just angling down the left side, signal wide by umpire Bayam. to the total two for on that wide so two wides there it's interesting to see how Kimali will approach uh, Ned because Ned seems to be a batsman aggressive by nature that's, that's how we know Ned and um Anything that is with with with, he will tend to go down the ground. And now you see the mid on and mid off is up. So I guess it has to be a line, a straighter line to him. It's a wing and a miss again by Ned. This team rehorses the shot, which he wishes to pull to the vacant area. The acres of land, once he gets that over the mid wicket region. Only two feelers out here, this deep square leg and the fine leg. And this to be short somewhat. And a miss again. Two. 26 without loss of salt and breakers. Um, interestingly, word being given there by Rick Ford Walker. of 26 and 24 of those goes to Kader Ned. Of catch, I think is just bouncing just before the keeper. End of the over, end of over number two, it's 26 without loss.
So the captain himself will take up the attack into the third over, Williams. Coming from the commentary boot end where we are here. Pull into Rickford Walker. Where? Yeah. Clean up there, Wayne Harper. Azim Brown, a short third, an extra run, so that coming off the tie, upper part of the body, so goes to for a two run, one another run to the total, two to Walker, 29 without loss, Sarpon Breakers, good start for the Sarpon Breakers, remember uh, the Botanical Garden Rangers, they're on a the hype. They're on two from two matches. This is top of the table clash. And in the air, over point. And it's going out to the point boundary. And it now crosses the rope. Four more to cut in head off a slower ball. And it go, the total goes to 33 without loss. Botanical Garden Rangers, they have to do something to Kade to somewhat restrict him flowing runs like this want to see the back of Kade it goes down the ground again out to the boundary out to the mid wicket region now four more to Kade four more to the salt pond breakers it is 37 without loss Interesting way that uh, Kade is playing is he's moving that front foot away from, from the stumps and he's just creating his own space there so that he can get connection with that ball. That's what is fast. Seam up. Seam up. And that one zip crossed the batsman and tripped to the keeper just above his shoulder. Anything any keeper would like to catch. Bongs. This pitch still has some juice in it, as we we'll normally say. Oh, this one again. Top edge over the top for six. Top edge for six. Kyle Ned is taking it to the, so the Botanical Garden Rangers. They are 43 without loss. At the end of over number three. Well, if you're just joining us and you're seeing live cricket here from the Annalsville playing field where we're bringing you the GM 11 VPL 4.0 T10 series tournament. And uh, it's the top of the table clash between the, the Salt Pond Breakers, Botanical Garden Rangers. The Botanical Garden Rangers won the toss and decided to bowl first and on a very good pitch for batting and both batting and bowling. So... We are now seeing a bowling change. Kenneth Demba, right arm off spinner, comes into the attack. And very experienced in his uh, bowling. He's bowling, been bowling for a number of years and have bowled a first class for the Windward Island Volcanoes. So he would have some knowledge of this uh, playing field. And um, Rickford Walker 
They both play for the police cricket club locally. They should have a knowledge of Israel. Swing and a miss. Uh. Kaji of police officers playing in this tournament. Number four. Short delivery. Pull away to midwicket. Four more to the Salt Pond Breakers. Four to Rickford Walker. And the total move on to 47 as we've been joined by Alan. So, Alan, so a very fiery start, we'll say, um, by the Salt Pond Breakers. Yes, 47. Um, well within the power play. Four deliveries remaining. They're looking to get a big one here. in the air could be taken he's taking it <laughs> the spice man juggled that one and on the second attempt he made it and boy rickford walker has to go the southern breakers losing their first wicket well that was a very good catch there um, initially he misjudged it he came in a little bit too too far um, not accounting for the timing that we saw from Rickford, Rickford Walker. He, Walker. He actually played a shot like that, identical shot like that, in the previous game for four. And this time he was looking to repeat that shot, but he got it too straight. Went to the mid-wicket instead of in the square leg region. And uh, there was Fletcher. He was coming in um, full speed, but he had to check himself at the last minute as he almost overran it and caught it on the second attempt. Yeah, at the replay, we see the shot from Rickford. Bottom-handed flick. Probably travelled a bit further than he intended it. And that was a good grab on the second attempt there by the Spice Man. Well, you have brought some spice to the Islands very playing field. Even in his feeling. So, Kenneth Demba got the breakthrough for this, this, the Botanical Garden Rangers, which bring Kadim Aline to the crease. Talented cricketer. Batsman crossed while the ball was in the air. So Ned comes back on strike. So then becomes a wrong the wicket from the Grenadines N. Have the multiplicity of islands down part of the island there. Straight as a pin. What else can you ask? So here we go. Kadim Ned is on it. Four more runs to Kadim and four more to the Serpent Breakers. Yeah, that was an excellent shot by Kadim Ned as we saw. Um, we, we saw that the, that shot, the 50 for the team coming up of 3.4 overs, 51 for one. And Ned, he's on 42 of 17 deliveries. A belligerent start here by Kadim Ned. It appears that Ned is in a no nonsense mood. He's not even faced by the wicket that was just lost a while ago. If he continues at this rate and he's not dismissed, um, he, he will be in, in for a possibility of getting a three-figure score. Well, can we get that? Can we get that, please? Swing in there. Could be taken. Uh, Edwards is under it. And he's dropped it. Dropped it. My goodness me. Is he run out? A comic of excuse going on. And that signal for the third umpire. Well, what is it that Allen was doing? He was almost all the way down on Karen Ned, the non striker, who wasn't even noticing that he was coming for a second. And the run out opportunity signal again to the third umpire. An interesting set of events there. We saw um, Ned, he was disappointed with the shot, so probably anticipating being dismissed. Not really looking or thinking about two. You could see he's really just jogging the force because he's thinking, oh my, well, I'm, I'm going to get caught now. And then it was dropped. And Ali saw the drop and was thinking, let me try to get a second here. But Ned was having no part of it. We have to see the rest of that replay to make the decision. Um, of course, they, we have the benefit of a third umpire in this tournament. So um, we'll, we'll just have a look at the replay and await the decision of the third umpire on that run out of Kade and Ned. Of Aline, sorry.
Well, yeah, have, well, have best be not out. That's how it is the decision there. It should have been walking back to the pavilion. A jump catch there from Larry Edwards. Salt Pond Breakers live to see that kind of Ned is at the crease. So good for the Salt Pond Breakers. And um, Botanical Garden Rangers would have really wanted to see the back of uh, Kaden Ned. But had it, it's not to be so. So we go back live here. That one ricocheted into Ned. So it kind of helped the feeler there a bit. Yes, I was struck fiercely by, by Kadi Malin looking to go down the ground straight. And so he's off the mark. And at the end of the power play, it's 53 for one. Ned is on 43 of 18. Aline is on one of 11. The sole batsman to be dismissed is that of Wick, Rickford Walker. Um, he was um, caught off the bowling of um, Denver. And the catch was taken by, by the spiceman, Andre Fletcher. And so he is the sole batsman to be dismissed. And Demba has one for 10 off his solitary over. And he could have had another wicket. The wicket of Ned. Of, um, you see that job, can, job chance there by Larry Edward. Oh. So it brings Razim Brown into the attack. Razim Brown bowling from the commentary boot end as the umpire butler signals now the end of the power play. And um, still haven't seen the legs being a Kieran Kotoy, seeing him doing a little bit of drill on the boundary. Appears to be the one coming into the attack. Maybe next, I'm not sure. Razim Brown take up the attack. Somewhat stem the flow of runs that has been offered here mostly by Karen Ned. So Ali now. And Alan, so what do you what do you think should be the, the, the ploy now for uh Kade since he yes he's get it off for the, the power play that's what the plan should have been would have been for the stop and breakers but now that the power play has ended what do you think should be his, his approach well I, I think judging from how i've seen him play in the past i think he's gonna keep going and then have nine wickets in hand so why not Yes, if you're just watching us, it's 44 from 19 delivery. Really take it as a... Well, I, I believe that the Botanical Garden Rangers is somewhat surprised at the aggressive... Though we know Ned to be an aggressive batsman around this time, uh, in this format of game. Buffalo pull away over the top for six. Karen Ed now joins the... Uh, sorry, Aline joins the party with Karen Ed. Yes, that was a short delivery by Razin. He doesn't have the pace to trouble um, a batsman of, of Aline's um, calibre. So he, he should try to stay away from that short pitch delivery. That was pulled very far in front of square and over the boundary for six. What he can do. And a miss. It's much better delivery there. You saw him um, adjusting his line and his length. And the bowling just back, just back of a, a full length, good length area, and uh, outside the off stump, and that was a good delivery. Aggressive approach here by the so from India could be taken. Kiran Koto is under it. Oh, did he take it? Did he take it? And it appears to be a clean catch. He just juggled it, got over the rope, and get back in in time. And um, the batsman there waiting in the middle for a confirmation from the umpire to see whether or not that was clean enough. From our vantage point here, it appears to be clean here. And there you go. Yes, yes. Well ah. done, well done by Katoy. And um, when we when we look at the length again, that was a similar length to the previous delivery, because it wasn't as full. He wasn't able to get as much power and into the flick shot, so he walked the wrist, 
hoping that he'll get it into the gap and over the boundary, but uh, there was the brilliance of Kieran Katoy really making a catch, although we see these things more often in the modern game, but he was there to really haul that in and, and to effect the dismissal as we wait, await confirmation from the umpires. Well, the umpire, Butler, he gave the soft signal of out, and um, so it will be interesting that it has to be serious doubt in this one. Well, so there you have it. And the red light is shown, so he has been given out. The soft signal was out, so it means that um, unless there was um, some significant piece um, of evidence no, no, in, the yes. in the replay, that it would remain as out. So there you go. Um, excellent feeling by Katoy, and that is what we have come to expect from him. The standards of these, these uh, Winwood Islands and international players are really showing here. Uh, it, it is good because other team players who have not been exposed to, to that level of cricket is really learning. And um, there you see Kieran Kotoy, who normally plays for the Windward Island Volcanoes, really showing some experience. Uh, these are training drills uh, that they normally do in their practice sessions. So he will be used to that. So very good work there for the Botanical Garden Rangers. They have made uh, inroads again. This time, it is Aline who goes back to the hut. Ned is still there for the uh, salt pan breakers. He's 44 from 19. And he will be on strike. Um, the batsman crossed while the ball was in the air. So, Razin Brown getting a very important wicket. And uh, Ryan John, of course, joins Ned at the crease. Let's see how Brown finish off, finishes off the over. Ned approaches as to looking to get some singles to his attack as we see the end of the over 62 for two 62 for two at the end of the fifth over uh some run rate of 12.40 ned he's on 45 from 20 and um john yet to score yet to face a ball he just got in here so it will be or a person with them switching ends there um Yes, yeah, so it is. Then we're going to be operating from the from the southern end. So he has come back after um, a little break in his spell. He bowled um, that wicket taken over, and he's back now. So he, along with Brown, they are in the wickets, and uh, they would want to continue to keep to take wickets because we have seen the up approach of the Salban Breakers so far in the tournament. Their approach is to keep going. And they keep sending in um, aggressive player after aggressive player. Well, the stage is set. The stage is already set by Ned. So uh, I believe that if a wicket falls, it would be Bennett and Stapleton who will come in. Um, good start to the over there from Demba. There, there's a strong wind that is blowing. If we see the coconut trees, they're really having a hard time to be, to be still because of the strong wind. So Ned is looking to go with the off spinner through that midwicket region, but Demba, with the feel he has, wants him to play over the cover region. In the air. Oh, he's dropped it. He's dropped it. <laughs> My goodness me. What is happening in the Rangers camp? It was Ned, he was looking to go over extra cover. And uh, coming off the outside edge, a bit of turn there for Demba. I think there was confusion between the two fieldsmen. And uh, that led to some issues there. But the catch was that easy that I'm not too sure if that would be a sufficient excuse for Kimali Williams to use. My goodness. It really just lobbed to him there at, um, at backward point. Should be chalk and cheese. Well... Can I net again live another day? Will, will, they, will those misses against Ned prove costly in the end? John is off the mark. To the short third man region. And, um, do you believe that these catches play a psychological effect on you, um, Cookshank? You've been, you have played some cricket? Well, what you have seen over, um, when catches start being dropped is that quite often you, you don't see one or two. You end up seeing a few. 
We have seen a few so far. This is one. Yes, it's almost like it becomes contagious and, and it starts spreading through the team. So they would want to, to get those two out of their system quickly and change that now. Probably if somebody takes a brilliant one, it may G them up again. And as we saw from Katoy uh, and Manuel Virgo, it should really lift the spirits of the feeling team. Straight delivery there from um, Demba. Demba is bowling very straight to John and um, he, he should... He have a knowledge of John that uh, he, he's a tall lad and um, if he ever give him some leverage, that ball could travel miles. Yes, we saw him play a very um, brisk innings in the last game and he was disappointed getting out for about 16 runs. Oh, mighty blow! Talking about Mile, that one has some uh, hostess on it. And it takes um, Kadene to a much, much needed 50 for his team. And it's 53 and South and Breakers, they are 72 to, for two, sorry. Yeah, so we, we already said that Ned would keep going and he has been dropped twice. And, uh, you know, this may yet prove to be extremely costly for the Botanical Garden Rangers team. They want to see the back of him. Um, the other batsmen who have come in for the breakers, they have not really gotten off to uh, with the type of momentum that he has shown so far in his innings. So it is key if they want to pick back the um, soap on breakers that they dismiss, dismiss Ned at this point. Fix it is, eh? Well, well, well. The soap on breakers, they're really breaking the shows of the Rangers. Um, Razim Brown. So Razin Brown and his brother Salvan is keeping. So they are both playing for the same team here. And two of the other brothers are playing for the Divers along with Dean Brown who is playing for the Explorers. John seems to be playing more of a quiet innings um, and letting Kade continue the the fiery attack to the Botanical Garden Rangers. And it is, it is good to see that the salt pond breakers, they're not giving up, um, knowing that the Botanical Garden Rangers have a, an artillery lineup for them in their batting. Yes, they have to get a good score here, absolutely. That should be the case. Should be aiming for a 120 minimum. This one is pulled away. So it appears to be the day for Kade and Ned. And pull away between mid-wicket. And boy, isn't Kade, Kade and Ned starting to have some what we call carnival time here at VPL 4.2. Yeah, he's one of the batsmen. That, the, the one thing I like about Ned is not just the intent that he shows, but he's one of the batsmen in the crease who is never a stationary target. In, in the tournament, some batsmen show intent, but you, know, you kind of know what to expect. But with him... He will charge down the wicket, he will back away, he will go across, he will do... So you really don't know what to expect from him as a bowler, and, and that is to his advantage. Well, hands of the softball breakers, they are screaming out, short delivery. Only warning, be careful, that's one for the over. Butler... In that one shot down the ground can it be taken six more it's raining sixes here Alanson Kadenet really turning on the party here yeah and that's a shot that he likes um, he has hit quite a few sixes of that length not just in this tournament but in the past tournament so it that midriff type of height um, giving him the room to swing. He doesn't matter. He doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter to him where it goes, whether it goes straight, whether it goes over the offside, or whether he's able to get into it all enough to target to mid wicket. That length will go. So there needs to be some adjustment here from Razin. Well, it doesn't matter the adjustment. Uh, the license has been given to Kare to go, and anything over the rope is what he will, he will relish. As this one is just a good delivery, full and wider, making space and miss that one. Something that is a rarity with Kade, that delivery. Yes, that was a good adjustment by Razin. And just a little bit straighter, you would have probably gotten him bowled. So that was a good change of length 
Um, judging from what we have seen so far. The next side. Should be signal wide. Leg by this time, sorry. Leg by. End of the over. End of the seventh over. It's 84 for two. Alan, so what do you think should be a total here? Good enough for the Southland Breakers. Well, they're going at about 12 and over um, at this point. So, as I said before, 120 should be the minimum that they're aiming for. They have eight wickets in hand. And uh, they should really be looking to get around 120. The Botanical Gardens Rangers will have other things in mind. And uh, they would definitely want to curtail the run scoring and keep them below that um, that target. But I would think that 120 would take a little bit of getting. Even for the much vaunted Botanical Gardens Rangers um, batting lineup, it would be a competitive score today. Well, remember that the Botanical Garden Rangers, they also have a long list of bowlers. So here we see Winston Samuel, medium pacer, uh, coming into the attack. We'll see if he tries to see, get Ned walk back to the pavilion. Or let's see if Ned will take it to him as well. Winston Samuel has really got a good um, 3.0. He, he bowled very well. That's with a dot. That's with a dot. Uh, Alan, so do you think a medium piece? There have always been a debate that a medium piece is harder to hit than 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 any other bowler. Uh, what's your view on that one? I don't think so. I think it all depends on where you put the ball, no matter how quickly or how slowly you're bowling. He's in there. Could be taken. Let's see. He's taken and Winston takes the, gets the breakthrough. Kalene goes and Keswick Williams cleans it up. Well, he's the captain and he said, I'll do it myself. All right, so it, it, after giving Ned quite a few chances, they have finally dismissed him. Good innings from him, 63 of 30. Uh, he had a full toss, a slow delivery again. Just was able to get it off the 12th of the bat, so not able to get the distance that he wanted. And you would expect Keswick Williams to take that 99 times out of 100. A very good knock there from uh, Kadenet, something that is really interestingly good at this stage for the Southampton Breakers. He goes for 63, and boy, he's got a standing ovation from his teammates there. And that delivery was somewhat going away from him because he was making room to get that one, but only could have found Kedrick Williams, who it will not drop the air at his standards. And we see, we see from Samuel that his two deliveries that he has bowled thus far, he has bowled two off-cutters. One didn't pitch, which was the last one that got him the wicket, but the first one was also an off-cutter. So that seems to be his ploy um, at this stage. And he'll be bowling to Ryan John now, so he'll be bowling to the right hand. Let's see if he makes any adjustments. Okay. That's a dead ball. Ryan John may just have a bit of distraction there. Ready? Of course, it's trickling down into the islands. They're playing field. Um, some leaving their work early to come to cricket. Back by signal, and um, now that they have gotten a breakthrough with with, with um, Karen Ned, Bennington Stapleton walks to the crease. Uh, what what advice the captain should give to Bennington at this stage? Three over, uh, some two point three balls to go. Um, is uh, is a license to go? I would say so. Um, the two of them had a good partnership in their last game, and I I would think that their confidence would be high, and they would want to just continue as they were. Well, interestingly, um, Winston Samuel and Bennington Samuel and Bennington Stapleton, they hail from the same area of North Leeward and in the same village of Rosal, um, in the north western side of St. Vincent. So they should be able to know each other. Um, they always have that rivalry that Bennington, you can't hit my ball. So somewhat of a friendly rivalry there. 
trying to rush through the overs, Samuel, and being asked to pause the for the second time in the over by Ryan John. In there, could be taken. Ethan Gibson settles himself, and he takes the catch. So Ryan John goes. The second wicket falls in this over for the Southampton Breakers. And boy, Samuel is the man. His second wicket. He boy, is he doing the trick there for the captain? It seems as if Gibson initially didn't pick up the flight of the ball. He was there standing for a while, almost like he didn't see it. And then he had to make a few quick steps at the end. But he, he judged it well um, in the end. He recovered himself and, and took a, 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 a good catch. Well, 86 for four. 86 for four, the salt pond breakers. They will need to get over the 100 mark to put up a, to a, a somewhat of a challenging total, we will say, as we see an exotic uh, super yacht you now sailing across the, the tranquil waters of the Grenadines there. That yours, Casnell? It's a good time to go on that, man. Uh, can I leave you here alone? Well, if it's yours, you, I mean, you don't have to stay at this job. Well, well, well. <laughs> well, well, well. Do you have a lot of resources at your disposal? At my disposal. That secret disposal. <laughs> well, so at the disposal here of the Botanical Garden Rangers brings a captain, Dylan Johnson. So these are two power hitters at the crease here now. So that's a good ploy there by Winston to go wide at um, Benetton Stapleton there. Very good over by Winston, and this is something I remember from him in VPL 3. He was able to bowl post over number five with his two over spells quite um, miserly in the last tournament. Just mixing up his pace, bowling quite full, changing his line a little bit for the left and the right hander, but always asking them to add the pace to the delivery, and, and that is something that he, um, he does quite well. And he has been able to execute that well on this occasion. Well, 86 for four. We're into over number nine. The captain, Keswick Williams, is going to bowl a penultimate over. It will be interesting to see the approach now. Uh, Johnson is on, this, is on strike. It will be interesting to see how Keswick bowls Johnson. Um, what is very familiar around this cricketing world here in is that Johnson likes the, the whiff on the delivery so he can swing with his long levers. Keswick will be very knowledgeable of that. There you go, down the ground, could be taken. Kenneth Denver cleans it up this time and boy, the, the Botanical Garden Rangers takes their fifth wicket. The captain walks back, and the Salt Pond Breakers, they are somewhat drying up in the seas at 86 for five. You see, Keswick, he loved that wicket, um, getting his, his former teammate out there. And that's a vital wicket, I think, for the, the Botanical Garden Rangers. The wicket is still playing quite nicely. 86 for five can go either way. Um, they would want to get 110 or so the salt on breakers, but if the wickets keep falling the way they are, then they will struggle to get there as we see um, Kenzie Joseph coming out to join Benetton Stapleton at the wicket. So the Rangers would probably want to keep them down now to probably about 100, 105 the maximum, and they would be satisfied with chasing that. Remember Keswick Williams is an international cricketer, he plays for the West Indies and he has knowledge of death bowling. This one was a slower delivery that had width on it. So he's asking Andy Lonos to manufacture his own strength. And he was not able to get it over the ropes, but to the hands of Kenneth Dembo, who has some bucket hands. Spot on, Kaznel. And a miss by Benetton. Keswick, Keswick is an experienced bowler. He, Benetton will have to see what he has to do quickly. If he's waiting just on pace on this delivery, Keswick knows him very well. They both play for uh, the local police cricket club. So he knows that Benetton likes the pace onto the bat. Swing and a miss again. Just wider this time. Oh, he's got him. 
He's run out. As a matter of fact, it's a direct hit or so. And he's signal a wide. So, yes, you can be run out of a wide. There you go. Exactly. Well called by umpire Butler. But Benetton was doing a bit of ball watching. And in doing so, the keeper, yes, he's a long way out. Yeah, I think it was good opportunistic thinking from, from Joseph to call him through for the single. But as you said, after playing that big shot, um, he was a little bit off balance. And then he was also ball watching. So that delayed him long enough for Salvan to do that good tidying up work and get that direct hit in. Um, so very good work by Salvan in effecting that run out. Well, it's also good thinking from the captain to allow the ball to do a direct hit. Um, even though he was somewhat almost not in the frame at the time of the, the ball hitting the stump. But... It was good thinking all wrong by the Botanical Garden Rangers. So 87 for six, uh, the fall, uh, somewhat falling apart yeah, by the salt and breakers, something that they would not have anticipated. That brings Barnum into the attack. Joseph now coming off the mark strike and this is the danger of that type of ploy by the the salt and breakers of going hard throughout yes it's only 10 overs but sometimes you can find yourself being bowled out and losing wickets quite quickly um, because of that go hard or go home ploy um, with some refinement if they maintain it throughout the tournament it may prove beneficial but it can backfire at times and this one is struck down the ground can it go for four it's so straight that it it pairs both fillers at long on and long off and one bounce into the boundary. I welcome boundary for the South and Breakers. Yes, that was a good shot from Barnum. Slow delivery from Keswick. Barnum waited on it and he just swatted it down the ground. His weight was on the back foot but his swing was, was true and he got it over the, the ropes. One bounce for four. Well, 92. Can they get up to nine, 100? ground full and straight oh miss feel miss feel there by demba very strange occurrence excellent running by the two batsmen at the crease um they were well on the way um kenzie joseph he was going to the danger and he had already made up his mind that he was going to turn and the fumble just confirmed it and by the time the throw was in he was safely home Yep, uh, but but uh, Cookshank, they always say that the coach is never run on a misfield. Not at this stage of the innings for sure. Not when you have <laughs> seven deliveries remaining. <laughs> Even when it goes in the keeper hand, they run. So <laughs> this is the time when you run for anything. Okay. <laughs> so end of the ninth over, end of the ninth over, it's 95 for six, the swap on breakers. 95 for six. Um, Williams finishing his two overs there, one for 25. And the current run rate is some 10.56, uh, just halfway, just some easily halfway over the 11 mark. So, yeah, anticipating the last over here will be bowled by Winston, who have gotten a very good first over, have took two wickets in that first over. So the captain have entrusted him to bowl the last one can he restrict them to under 100 and um the salt and breakers will be looking to psychologically get a three figure here with the botanical garden rangers this run out there well another opportunity and i believe well he's missed the second opportunity with the ball dropping out of his hand, Wayne Harper backing up there. Yeah, those was, was two opportunities to get a run out of the same delivery. Not something that happens quite often. But um, Harper was in quickly from extra cover. His throw, having one stump to aim at, he missed the stumps. And the field at midwicket was in quite early. And uh, there was an opportunity for another run out. Start to the over. Wide signal by umpire Bayam. So the ploy here is to bowl wide and slow to, to Barnum and to Joseph. Um, I, I, if I was the keeper, I would have stand up another two steps 
Because Winston will not, I doubt, will push through that ball with speed. Just as you said, another slow delivery. Batsman is looking for pace onto that one. 98 for 6, please. I'm begging you, get to 100. Can we see 100 by the salt pond breakers? Absolutely. And I, I would just say that the batsmen could actually set themselves for the slow delivery with Winston. He bows more of them than his on pace delivery. This one is struck out. It could be. Oh, in this indecisive choice there of whether to go or stay for that catch and in the end Edwards decided I'll stay and take it on one bounce and uh, he gets it back in very powerfully to three, two of them to back up that one yes just three deliveries remaining they would want to get about 105 110 would it be enough it's left to be seen um, they would have been hoping for more at the beginning of the innings but um, it's an innings that has seesawed all the way through lower delivery well look at this and he's run out so joseph is run out of a of a no ball mm -hmm. i think that no ball is for the height i think that no ball is for the height of the delivery let's see yeah there you go the height but the keeper been very alert and winston himself realized there's an opportunity here for run out so on that note, it brings up the 100 in, in the 10th over for the Salt Pond Breakers. 100 for 6 and the Salt Pond Breakers. And um, psychologically, that's a, that's a very good mark to reach there, Alan. Well, I'm just looking at that last delivery. I mean, it was a no ball. It was in the keeper's hand. Um, you could have argued that he didn't have to run. But at the same time, being in the last over, he tried to t make the use of every opportunity. And Barnum himself has been striking the ball well. So far in the inning, so he'd probably want to get more of the strike. It will be interesting to see how this free hit goes in the air. Remember, he cannot be caught. Well, he could be caught, but can't be out except to the run out route of a no ball, of a free hit. He run through for, for one, interestingly. Two. Right, so two runs there. All the drama and slatchment comes to the crease. Oh. On a struck ferociously back to Samuel, who tried to, well, somewhat take himself out of the way. And it's another run out opportunity. And there you go again. Run out. So, all kind of drama taking place here. Oh, at the end of it, uh, the final tally is 104. A hundred and four for seven, the salt pond breakers for eight. Sorry, a hundred and four for eight. Uh, Alanson, is this enough? Well, it can be. Um, it all depends on the start that the, the Rangers get when they get at the crease. And also how they feel, the salt and breakers feel when they're in the, in, the, in the field. We have seen already, um, with the exception of the hikers this morning, that um, most teams have had subpar performances in the field. And that is something that could prove costly. And of course, if the breakers want to defend this as they defended yesterday they defended 120 yesterday against the the strikers 123 i think it was um they would need to be sharp in the field they would need to take all the chances there are a few batsmen who would definitely didn't want to be given more than one chance at the crease including fletcher and a few others so um they would want to ensure that they get some early inroads while the botanical gardens rangers would want to get off to a good start in the power play in particular but I ask you to stay tuned. We'll be back shortly to have the run trace of 105 here by the Botanical Garden Rangers. And um, remember, this is the top of the table clash here at the VPL 4.0. We'll be coming to you live. 120 or so, especially of the start that Cadene had had. And they will be a bit disappointed with where they ended up. But they will still think that with 105 on the board, you know, if we can get a few wickets, especially around the top order, 
Um, we see Fletcher is on strike, the aggressive Salvan Brown as well. If they can get amongst them early with some wickets, then they will be right in with a chance of defending the runs. Well, the spice man himself will be looking to spice up those runs, along with Salvan, who's coming off a good knock um, from the previous game. Elon Johnson from the commentary boot and to the spice man. Tremendous shot to open his account. One, two down the track, and boy, that passed the man there at extra cover with haste. Yes, well, Andrew Fletcher, we all know him. We know him pretty well. We have seen quite a few of his innings um, over the years, even from Stanford days all the way to now. And one of the things that you know about him, um, he likes to get at the quick bowling in the power play. Um, sometimes the spinners can peg him back a little bit, but he likes to get after the quicker bowlers in the power playovers. Well, the sound of the bat is so crisp that it, by the time I, I saw it, it was hitting the ropes. Oh, in a no nonsense mood, there was a man out there at mid wicket, and all that he could have done is watch that over the mid wicket region. And boy, the spice is already into the run chase. Yes, top, top shot there. Um, so he's, he's pretty determined to himself. He said, I'm coming down the wicket. Delon, you are not as young as he used to be. You're not going to put me back on the back foot. And even if you drop short, I'm going to pull you off the front foot because I have been playing international cricket for several years now. I'm accustomed to pace being about 10 miles an hour faster. Well, he's known for jab jab in his country, and he seems to be doing some jab jab here as this one is jabbed outside down to cover region. They're looking for second. So... That bring just one. So Salva now comes into strike. It's uh, eleven into the third. We are into over number one. Yes. Yeah, so brief start here by by the botanical gardens Rangers team. Brown coming to face his first delivery and two boundaries being hit out of three deliveries by Fletcher. Um, four through point and uh, a, a, a six over straightish mid wicket. No, Salvan joins the Jab Jab Man, Spice Boy, and he dashed that one to cover. And this one is a Vinci versus uh, uh, a Spice. So what, what we're going to see here is holding your own. And um, the Spice Man, they're really heating up things here in the top of the innings. This is the danger of this opening pair. Um, very, very um, belligerent batsmen. They have a range of shots and they don't bat down. So you have to get them or they're going to get you. It's caught it again. Two point, two cover. Four more to the total. And boy, what are the answers that the captain have now for the Rangers? Yeah, um, I think what he needs to do here now, Dillon, especially with that Salvan is approaching his batting, if he's going to maintain that length, then he needs to have a point back. Then he needs to have the sweeper cover out. Um, it wasn't a bad delivery per se, but because Salvan is giving himself room, he was able to get it square and he found the gap, which is key, and he was able to get four runs. This one is over cover this time, going out to the boundary, a long chase, but the bong running behind a delivery. Once that ball hits the ground, it squirts out to the, the, the rope. And boy, watch it over to start for the Rangers. Yes, and unlike um, some of the, the times when we have played VPL in the past, this is the first VPL that is in March. And we all know March is a quite a dry time here in St. Vincent. The outfield still looks the part in terms of the greenery, but one thing we would know is that it would be almost at its fastest now. Well, very good over there to start for the Botanical Garden Rangers. 23 without loss. And um, it will be Spin taking up the attack there. I think this is actually a good move. Um, whether it will pay off, we will see. But I, I think against these two um, batsmen that it's, it's, it's worth the risk. Um, yes, definitely worth the risk. They may still hit um, Joseph for quite a few runs, but I think they really, really love that pace of the ball coming on to the bat. Unless you have, of course, express space, 90 miles plus, and that's a little bit different. Well, Kenley Joseph comes into the attack. The Botanical Garden Rangers will be looking to set the precedence here. Remember, top of the table clash. Down the ground, could be taken, and he's got him! 
The spice man goes, the force delivery, and finding the man down there, and you rightly call it, the spin attack did it, and boy, aren't they happy with that, that the spice man has to go. Yes, and putting on my captain's hat, I knew that that was a good move there. That had to be what you had to do at this point, and um, spice man really showed me that it paid dividends of the force delivery, so, um, yeah, it's, it's something that, that, um, the salt pan breakers will be very relieved with, especially after the start that you saw from Fletcher in that first over. Um, but Brown is still there, so he'll now be joined by the diminutive Wayne Harper. Good player. He um, was very influential in terms of the run scoring for the Rangers in the last tournament. I think he probably got the most runs for them in that tournament. And, uh, of course, he would want to continue on uh, in that vein. He will know Cleansey Joseph quite well. And uh, no pressure is on them at this point because of the run rate. It's 82 needed from 53. But I know Salvan will keep going. So it may afford Wayne a, a, an opportunity to knock it around for his first few deliveries and then see where he can go from there. Well, it's a power play. Good move by the captain Johnson to bring Joseph, who have got rid of the spice man. Joseph decided that I'll bring a halt to the job job party and um, the Spice Man has to turn down his music and um, walk back to the stands. It's Wayne Harper to the crease, but Salvan is still there. Three boundaries of his three balls that he has faced. Salvan will feel that he has missed out on that one. That one was short, and he, you see that there's no feeler behind Square on the onside, so that was an opportunity to get a pull shot away over the infield. This time he capitalizes on that one, pull it in front of Square, and boy, four more to Salvan Brown. He will continue the party, even though the spice is not in it. Yes, although the last... He got away with it the previous delivery, and I thought that he would have made a slight adjustment, but it was too short. And Salvan is not going to keep missing out on, on pull shots, especially against the spin. One of his favorite shots. Cut away this time. So he's showing you his dexterity that he possesses. And boy, this one is cut between point and shot third man. Somewhat of a backward point and shot third man. Four more. Yes, very good shot. This one was short again. So he needs to adjust his length. When he bowled a fuller delivery, that was the one that took the wicket. Um, so there's no need for him to be dropping short. Probably a bit of intimidation there. He knows um, what he's up against in, in, in the form of Sal Van Brong. And all, but he was able to dismiss Fletcher, who is a West Indies cricketer. So um, why not continue with the fuller length? Oh, sweep. And he's giving him. Salvan goes attempting a sweep shot. And a full length, as you call it, Alanson. Boy, two wicket goals for the Botanical Garden Rangers in the, f in the second over. And let me see. Plum. Well, straight, straight. Plum. And look at the area that ball choose to go out him. Yeah, that was plumb in front there. Um, so he just simply missed a, a straight one. But again, um, that's the length that you really want to be bowling. And, and so the fuller length paid dividends. And Joseph, he has gotten two wickets for nine runs in that over. Two crucial wickets. And he has brought his team back into contention. Well, two dangerous players for the Rangers have now been placed back into the hut. It now brings Kieran Kotoy out in the middle. He hasn't really gotten any bat yet for the uh, Botanical Garden Rangers that could speak uh, but we know the repetition of of Kotoy. i believe that he's sent there now to somewhat capitalize still on the remaining overs for the power play as well as to rotate the strike yes and i believe that the, the job of um harper will be now to bat through the innings but until the end of the chase and that should be the way he's look he should be looking at it they require 8.9 which is not exorbitant in terms of the run rate but um, they will still need to ensure that they don't soak up too many dot deliveries and they take the runs that are on offer. Hi, we're here with Minister, well, former Minister Clayson Bergen. He was the former Minister of Sports, Entertainment, and Tandy Grenadines. 
Mr. Bergen, how are you enjoying VPL? Well, cricket being my favorite game, you know. Excited about this game and enjoyed it. But, um, you know, I would be a bit biased because Salt and Breakers is in my former constituency and very close to me, so I would be hoping for a win from them. Have you been impressed by the Breakers' performance so far? Well, in the earlier part, you know, they fell away coming in the last three overs or so, you know, because I was expecting a score of about 120 or thereabout, you know, but they fall short of that, you know, but they have, you know, got two good wickets here, the openers, who are very aggressive batsmen, you know, and I'm happy that they are out of the way. So let's hope that plays the breakers in a winning position then? Well, we cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties, as we always hear, you know, so it depends on how the guys perform, you know, the batters and the feelers, you know, is who really keep their head steady, would come out on top, really. But I think it's a good game developing, you know, two quick wickets after a brilliant and really breezy start, you know, so we have to watch with the next um, eight or so overs and see how it goes. Are you looking forward to the Morgans in the tournament? Yes, you know, I have been, as a matter of fact, I went following when the game would start, but for some reason or the other, I didn't even realize that it had started until Minister Stevens who asked me, where am I if I'm not at the cricket? So I'm saying, which cricket, you know, and then he reminded me. But I'm looking forward to um, this competition, and I think it augurs well for cricket, not only St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but in the Caribbean as a whole. You know, to see our players um, developing and honing the skills and so on, so that they can, you know, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Winnowed Island, but the West Indies, you know, in times to come. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the match. Yes, I hope it too. You know, I'll watch it until the end, you know, and hoping that there would be victory for <laughs> Salt and Breakers. Thank you very much, Mr. Bergen. Back to broadcasting. Okay, thank you, Debanova. Um, yes, former yes. Minister of Health there. Oh, thank you very much. Your yeah, four was struck there by Harper. So it takes a total to 36 for two. Uh, it should be a matter of concern for the Botanical Garden Rangers. Um, Cookshank? No, not yet. I, I think they are well in, in the game. They just need to forge a partnership here between these two. It's a bit of balance here, and uh, both teams will believe that they are in the in the controlled seat somewhat. Now we see Ryan John is into the attack here. He's been bowling some very good seam up delivery there to Harper. And, uh, interestingly, still into the power play. Well, it's in the air. It could be taken. Taken it is. And there you go. A celebration that um, not really acknowledged but there I, I, I do not understand any, that celebration but Harper goes the botanical garden rangers losing their third wicket in the power play yeah, I think it's a it's a push up you have seen it sometime you know you do one and then you spread your hands out and you go back and do another push up okay but he did one one good <laughs> so the botanical garden rangers will need some push up now to the total they have 38 for free uh, the worst position they have been in in the power play for this VPL. I think now that they're in some trouble now, Kaznel. Um Not necessarily because of the rate. The rate is still manageable, but the, the, the rate at which they're losing wickets, um, they need to make sure that they put on a little partnership here because the power play is still um, still um, in, 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 in play and they have already lost three wickets. and Three of their top order wickets as well. Um, they would want to ensure that um, they do not lose another wicket probably for the next three or four overs and then that would put them back right in the game. Well, it's the end of the third over, 38 for three. And at this stage, the salt and breakers, they were 43 without loss. And um, still good sunshine here. 
Joseph is coming back for his last and uh, second over it is. Close up of the power play as well. That brings Kenneth Demba to the crease. Remember that the Botanical Garden Rangers, they have a cadre of batsmen lined up here. He's bowled him! He's bowled! A short delivery and boy, isn't the Rangers in trouble? Kieran Kotoy trying to pull the delivery that was just below his knee roll. Was able to get that ball ricocheted into the middle stump. And isn't Joseph doing it here for the South Pond Breakers? Yes, Kensley's putting in a big performance here for his team. He has taken three vital wickets. And the, the, the Botanical Gardens Rangers are 38 for four. And the decision to bowl a spin in the power play, excellent decision, especially against this batting lineup. Not that they are poor against spin, but they definitely have been quite um, devastating against the quick bowling. So um, this has been uh, um, good thinking, good thought process by the captain and the think tank for the, the salt and breakers. And Joseph definitely um, is, amongst, is, amongst, uh, is amongst them, as you would say. Well, in that, it brings Ethan Gibson, Ethan to the crease, Ethan Gibson. challenging task for the young man interesting to see the approach now for the botanical garden rangers i i showed you that kenneth demba will not go down without a fight but joseph is doing a remarkable job here for the salt and breakers waters of the south Pond breakers begin to rage against the rangers can we see? Can we see? All wickets gone for the Botanical Garden Rangers for just 38 runs in the power play. Mark right away. And so this is not something somebody would have put on a script with the, with the batting lineup that the Botanical Garden Rangers have uh, ad, uh, uh, into the power play like this. Well, one of the things I mentioned quite um, early in the piece is that if they get a few early wickets, the salt and breakers, they will be right in with the game when we ask if 105 was enough. And so said, so done. Of course, if Fletcher and uh, Brown were still at the crease, they probably would have been 60 now without loss. So it, it, it's, it's um, a different kettle of fish altogether, four down for 39. Well, a name that is synonymous to the seaside fish, so the salt pan, they wouldn't want their fishes here to be actively swimming across the ranger's areas, getting their wicket. Um, Joseph at the time is doing that. Definitely. I've got some big fishes. Fletcher, Salvan Brown, Kieran Kotoy. And Joseph is bowling very smart. He's not putting any pace onto that ball and he's looping it. So he's asking you to, 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 to excrete that, that, that strength that you have, that inner strength, and, and try to muscle it over the, the, the mid-wicket region, in this case, to the left-hander. And that's a good ploy, especially to Gibson, young man. Might be a bit of nerves. Uh, first time, I think he's getting a knock in VPL. And um, he'd want to show himself the part. So there's no need to change what is not broken. Um, Kensley has one delivery remaining um, of this inside the spell that he has bowled. 41 for 4 after 3.5. Temperature for 1. So end of the power play, an uh, eventful power play, uh, 42 for 4, something that the doctor would not have ordered for the Botanical Garden Rangers, but the Salpan Rangers, the Salpan Breakers, they decide that they will take it, and um, boy, isn't they 
in the better position at this point. Well, after one over, the score was 23 without loss. Um, Johnson, um, one over, none for 23. Joseph, he bowled, he has bowled his spell, two overs, three for 13, taking some big scalps. Ryan John, a solitary over going for um, for six runs and taking a wicket as well. Fletcher, the spice man, was dismissed for 11 or four deliveries. Caught Aline, bowl Kenzie Joseph. Salvan was LBW, Kenzie Joseph, for 20 or seven deliveries. Wayne Harper was dismissed, caught Benetton Stapleton, bowl Ryan John, for seven or seven deliveries. And Katoi was bowled, clean bowl by Kenzie Joseph, of his first delivery, so dismissed for a golden duck. And so Demba and Gibson, they are both on two apiece and they have a lot of work ahead of them in order to overhaul the target. Well, the current run rate is 10.5 and, and it requires another 10.5 uh, to see the Botanical Garden Rangers getting victory here. So first stop delivery, Bennington Stapleton now comes into the attack after the power play. Uh, first delivery wide, not a good start. Um, they would want um, Cookshank. Yeah, he'd want to get his line and length um, correct very quickly. Um, the, the target, although they have taken four wickets, the target is not a big one. Although we have seen some tight overs after the first over, um, they can be on track if they do not take, up, um, take any more wickets. So they can't give away any freebies at this point, the breakers. Um, India could be taken, taken it is, and boy, the ranger seems to be jungling in the ponds of the salt here at the Adamsville playing field, and they have lost their fifth wicket. Yes, totally, totally immersed in everything here, and, and they get their head up above waters and get it above waters very quickly, or else they would have totally submerged um, like a submarine. Well, boy, oh boy, oh boy. In here to the Rangers, did they bring the gears to go into the sea? Oh, um. Rangers find themselves in some devastating trouble. Now brings the captain to the crease, Williams. He has to play that captain role now, prides himself as a batsman. And a bowler. And so, what's your take on that? It's 43 for five. Uh, difficult straights now because of the amount of wickets that they have lost. They are not totally out of it, but um, given the way that the salt and breakers are bowling and the energy that they are showing in the field, and they they know that they have just tipped the skills and of, of, of balance in their favor. The other teams that are watching. Uh, like the last of the hikers who have won their first game this morning. What, what, what do you think might be the, the, the strategy that they will use against the, the, the Botanical Garden range just coming into their other round of games? I'm thinking you'll see a lot of spin in the power play. For sure. You're going to see a lot of spin in the power play once um, Fletcher and Salvan are opening the batting. As I said, when, when Kenzie came on, it may not necessarily be um, effective, but it would definitely be worth the try. And what I would have done as well if I were captain. in there by Gibson. Left and right combination. 44 for five. Yes, if you're watching live here at the Adamsville playing field, you've just tuned in and you're expecting to see a master blast of runs from the Botanical Garden Rangers. Sorry to disappoint you, but it's 44 for five. The salt pond breakers decide that they will put them under some heavy manners as we are accustomed to discipline here in this part of this world. I'll take your word for it. I know that you are a man of the law. Oh, what a shot. Is the captain being batting all the time in the, in, in the, in the dressing room? False delivery flicked away for four. Yes, that was a nice looking clip of the, of the pads there, um, quite risky shot. I think he'll be looking at the replay a little bit later on, as you know, he, as you have said previously, he likes to pride himself in his batting. And so he'll be looking at that replay later, and if he gets a score here, I'm sure we'll all be hearing about it for a while. Well, I spoke with him earlier on before this game, and, and he said to me, somebody better watch the line. Accustomed to use before a game.
Stop the delivery. We're into over number five. Yes, we're still into over number five. Some 10.69 runs required. Just climbing up over 11. Something that the Botanical Garden Rangers will not want. They cannot lose any more wicket going forward here. Down the ground. Could be taken. He's dropped it. He's dropped it. Well, well, well. Could it be costly? It was a good effort in the end because he keep going away from him. Did it, did it hit the rule? Mm, great camera work there by the ITFX camera crew. Big boy. Well, he saved it. <laughs> great work there from ITFX. They were able to snatch that. Wing and a miss. That one was perilously close to the off, perilously close to the off something there. Well, um, that brings up the fifty for the botanical garden rangers. So end of the fifth over, it's fifty for five. Yes, fifty for five. And boy, the required run rate now is eleven. So the botanical garden rangers will be looking to capitalize now, as we see another spin has been taken. From the Atticus Brown. First time we're gonna see him bowl in this innings. Or in this in this in this whole VPL 4.0. Yes, um he, he he does bowl off spin and he um in the last game we were we were speaking about who is the other spin option that the salt and breakers have and Atticus name um came to the fore and they would need to utilize more and more spinners. Um, as they get deeper in the tournament. We have seen in the shortened form of the game that a good spinner um, quite often is, is worth the weight in goal. All right? Um, as, um, as we have looked at the tournaments around the world, whether T10 or T20. And so they're just taking the pace off, just ensuring that they're not supplying the batsman with any extra pace for them to utilize. And that may be so because of the, the, the what was set by Joseph. Absolutely. Well, that's why they cannot be bowling like that. Well, what a catch. What a catch that is. He, my goodness. My goodness. Kalim Aline, what are you doing? That is something magical. The last, the last time I saw a catch like that, it was doing Bravo, who was taking it. With the basketball leap at long off. Long on in this case to the left hander. And Gibbs would be disappointed when he made contact. He would have been saying to himself, it's, I've hit it quite flattered nicely. I'm going to get my first six. But um, it was intercepted airily there by um, Kadim Alin with that leap. That's somewhat of a goalkeeper save. And he plucked it out the air. And, and that's so unfair to the batsman. Yeah, it almost reminds me of in basketball um, a block. He was blocked there. You know, he was blocked there while going for his slam dunk. My goodness, it's 50 for 6, the Botanical Garden Rangers. They are in deep trouble. Yes, and, and, and the, the vibe is definitely here with the salt and breakers in this game um, because of their performance in the field so far. You could see all the, 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 the players are, are very enthusiastic. They are chirping a lot on the field. They are geeing each other up. And everyone is hopping around with a, with a skip in their step. Well, even the waves in the, in the Beckwith Channel is really cool. That the yachts are passing by. And boy, the Botanical Garden Rangers, they need to range up the mountains. And um, 
very colorful garden here in the Western Hemisphere in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So Atticus Brown, first delivery. Boy, oh boy. And see Atticus has taken a wicket with his first delivery in the VPL. First delivery in the VPL, he took a, a wicket. And what a way to take that wicket. That ball. The spin again is really putting pressure on the on the botanical garden rangers. This time, there is no way that um, <laughs> Alan could pluck that one. It was straight and it was chucked fiercely and a welcoming six there for the botanical garden rangers. Yeah, that one was a bit too short. He was lucky to get away with it with Gibson, but everyone is saying I'm having none of that. You're going to go all the way over the boundary. Barely cleared the boundary in the end, so if it was a bit um, square instead of that straight, it still had a chance of being caught, but good, good shot. The way to mid-wicket, clean up there by Ryan John. Camper two for one, so end of the over, end of over number six is 57 for six, 57 for six, some nine and a half runs. The current run rate, they require another 12. Over. 12 runs per over. Yeah, so the, the run rate required is mounting um, with time, and that is because of the, the loss of wickets. And so the Botanical Gardens, Botanical Gardens Rangers are finding themselves in a bit of a hole here. And uh, the salt pan breakers are firmly in the ascendancy in this fixture here in the VPL 4 Build a Vibe on match day 4, game number 8. Benetton Stapleton. Continue. Edwards and Keswick will look to see the Garden Rangers true on the wicket too. This one is pulled away with this taint. Through the mid-wicket region and he poses for the few cameramen and the media personnel that are here. Well, I, I think if Larry Edward had never played a pull shot as good as that in his life, he definitely has played one for his memory here today. And he was chuffed about that shot. You see, he stayed in position and said, yes, look at me. That was me playing that shot, in case and, you didn't know. And that's the danger that is posed by the Botanical Garden Rangers. They have batting experience right right down to number nine men who can hit the ball and uh what what the soft and breakers cannot do now is to trade all up and think that they have won the game just yet wide signal so that's seven of two what well, just one delivery so far so seven of one delivery so far something that will be welcomed by the botanical garden rangers <coughs> Can we see an exciting finish here? We keep so losing for the Botanical Garden Rangers, but yet they're getting closer. And 10, and just creeping up to 12 and a half here, required. 11 and a half, that is. Five, half one deliveries. This is a form shot down the ground. Should not pass John, who cleans up, returns it. Chesting, still clapping all around. Good cricket, good grass out here, green. Spectators who are here, they're really enjoying it. They're backing their team. The Botanical Garden Rangers have really won some um, spectators over their past two games. It dabbed away. This could go down to the boundary. The sweeper runs around, who will clean up at this time, and they come back for two. So, too much of the total. Uh, 
And, and so if you were a batsman in that position, would you have leave the wide and get the extra ball? It's quite easy to speak about it, but quite often when you're in the mood to try to hit the ball, sometimes it's almost, uh, almost um, impossible to actually leave a delivery even when you see it wide, unless you can't reach it. Well, the, the keeper realized that Williams seems to be enjoying Vincey Mass and dancing down the ground. So he just decided, okay, you will have to stay in your crease. I'll, I'll stand up behind the stumps. And uh, just hope that you'll be able to pick that. Swing. Aye. It's one. The stage the salt pan breakers it was 77 83 sorry for two they were 83 for two and um the botanical garden they are triple six 66 for six number that um holds a lot of meaning many quarters quarters that is as uh, as well as they're in this sixth over there is six point four overs Yeah, he had expected this. Come on, Benetton. Down the ground. Can this go past John? And it has cleared John. And boy, didn't that have some lift on it. And it is important for the Botanical Garden Rangers. They are 72 for 6. Edward is actually looking the part. He has played some good shots um, since he has come to the wicket. And he is he's looking in a fine fettle here. And, you know, quite often you see him as a lower order player um, for the windwards. But, of course, this is a level below that. And he's fancying his chances here, and he's looking the part. Well, what can the captain be saying to, to Benetton at this time? How, how, how do you bowl at him? This is the first time Benetton is going to bowl at, at Edwards. So what do you say? Uh, Johnson himself being former Winwood Island you know, player. Hyde. Should be confirmed now by umpire Butler. Yes, wide it is. So this temperature for one. So it makes it two wides. 72 for six. How do we see this coming on? Well, it's crucial. The next two overs, I think, will determine the game. If these two are still batting at the end of the eighth over, or, or probably halfway through the ninth over, then they still have a chance of winning the game. If not, the game is the breakers. Well, we have Ryan John to come, Dylan Johnson. So they, I believe that they will bowl the penultimate and the last over. So it's... Uh, Well, loud appeal, and they're sending it upstairs. Good take there by the keeper. <laughs> good, good take there. Brilliant piece of work. Um, somewhat of a Mahenja Doni kind of work. Well, unlike some of the teams in this tournament um, who are using makeshift keepers, people who are usually probably batsmen and keep part-time, Ansel Latchman is a proper keeper. He is a full-time keeper. That's what he does in cricket. And we saw the benefit of that there. Uh, with that tape down the leg side, is something he affected quite sharply. And we'll see soon if he was... Hmm. Hmm. That was close. Interesting. Oh. I think the bill was picked and he was planted. Well. I think his foot went up just for a millisecond there, but I think it's too close to call um, to say that it was up at the time when the bill was being removed and not before. A little bit was removed. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We are waiting. Oh, it's not out. So the green light goes with the green suit. <laughs> Definitely. Green light goes with the green suit. He's not out. Yeah, and so, I think a justifiable um, decision based on the evidence that we saw. I, I keep biting my fingernails to see what would have happened. So the umpire, the third umpire, decided, okay, let's have it. Not out. A bit of enjoyment here. Odds are all over feeling. In themselves in all position. So it will be Kadim Alin. So it will be Kadim Alin who will bowl this eight over. 74 for 6. They need some 31 runs from 18 delivery. Um, in your light of cricket, we would say that the, the, the batting team should get it across. 
normally, but with six wickets down, the bowling team will still feel that they have the chance to win. Um, another couple of wickets would definitely get them across the line, but they can't underestimate these two who are at the crease now. Alin would be feeling quite confident after that catch that he has just taken, you know, that's how cricket goes. A good performance in one area of your game can flow into confidence um, in another. And so we'll see how he goes in his bowling. And he'll be bowling to Larry Edwin. Alin. It's wide of a leg. Full and straight. Uh, not the signal wide there by the umpire. Good start to the over. Yes, and you're seeing that the field that is set here, you have a deep mid wicket, a long on, a sweeper cover, and a deep point. Only full deliveries will be bold. This one is swiped away. There's a man at mid wicket there. Benetton Tibetan takes the catch, and the seven wicket goes down for the Botanical Garden Rangers. And boy, are they in trouble! Are they in trouble? Let's see, 74 for seven. The Botanical Garden Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. They cannot afford to lose any wickets. Um, Edward, it was in this. It was there. It was there for the shot. Um, he just didn't time it as well as he would have liked. It was there, just around midland leg stump and, and that length that you can pick up over the onside. And he was hitting with the wind, but he just didn't make sufficient a sufficiently good contact um, with that delivery. Well, it was sufficient enough for the Salpon Breakers to get it to Benetton Stapleton. That is what they wanted. And the seventh wicket goes, Kadim Alin, and takes strike. He, that's his first over for the, for the match. And um, here we go, 74 for seven. And... Um, Williams is still the captain. It brings now Winston Samuel to the crease, left-hand batsman. And Musler couple. We have seen it in VPL 3.0 where he had saved the Botanical Garden Rangers on a couple of occasions with some amazing totals. But let's see if he can really clear the ropes because some 31 runs required from 16 deliveries. Yes, and Alin, after that, that splendid catch that he took down at long on, as we said, you know, the confidence can flow over. Now, having taken a wicket so early in his spell, he will definitely be feeling the vibe, as we would say here at VPL. Well, the vibes is pumping. Down the ground, straight back. So they're going for one. Could they come back for the second? No. The vibes all over this ground. All the feelers for the salt pan breakers are into it, uh, Alanson. They are, they, are, they are sensing the victory, but they just cannot say yet that, yes, we are there. Yes, they're definitely sensing the victory. And if they win today, they will, def they will go um, to the top of the table and, and be the only team at the top um, with three wins out of their first three. And, and it would all go well for them for the rest of the competition. It's always good to get off a, a good start and you could always build on your start. Um, it's always more difficult to pick up after a post start. And so they would want to finish this off efficiently here. Well, let's see. It shot steer the pass toward money going to the fence. The one or oh, diving effort, unable to make it. And four welcome runs there for the Botanical Garden Rangers. A good shot there by Mr. Will Keswick Williams. That's actually the shot of a, of a top order batsman. That's a very good shot. He was playing that with a straight bat in the air, both feet off the ground, a la Gordon Greenwich, and staring it down past point. That's another shot that I think that he will be reminding a lot of us about. As I said, he pride himself as a batsman. Don't rule him out as yet. Don't rule him out. And I, I, I know uh, the salt and breakers without their usual captain Sunil. And I, I, I guarantee you that wherever he's looking from around the world, he must be giving some instructions on his television screen to the salt and breakers. I'm sure he'll be enjoying it and should be and them on how to bowl at Keswick since he's his good friend. <laughs> Swings and he misses. Yes, he tends to want to open up the offside, Keswick um, usually backs away when he wants to be aggressive against the medium pace and the pace bowlers. Um, so that's something that they should be aware of. 12 Maybe runs. a third man might be a good position as well. And to bring up one on the onside. 
Well, 79 for 7 into a 8 over. Can we see some excitement? Can we see some missiles over the ropes? Slower delivery. Jive away down to cover. Can the cover man clean up? He cleans up Benetton and puzzled it back into the keeper. They cannot, cannot save two. So two more to the total, 81 for seven. At so, the end of over number eight. Yes, as I said, he will look to go through the offside. Uh, but that's a good over for the Salt and Breakers. Only seven conceded and they got the wicket um, that they desired. If they keep picking wickets up, then they will definitely get over the line. But 24 of 12, the batting side, the Botanical Gardens Rangers, they are not out of it by any means. Well, they're not out of it. They should be having a school there. Winston should be having a school of lessons there from Williams. He will be holding it tight there. Captain, he's seen himself. He's seen the team in this position couple of occasions. He's 15 from 10. And Samuel is 1 from 1. But remember, the, the score is right. Right what you see in there. 81 for 7, yes. With the lineup that the Botanical Garden possesses. Boy, we, we thought at the starting that 104 would have been easily destroy, destroyed. You never know with cricket um, and the only wickets that were taken. First over started off, um, they started off like a, um, a cat on a hot tin roof. And they were out of the blocks, all guns blazing, 23 runs in the first over. But a few wickets um, changed the, the complexion of the game. And now the salt and breakers are well in it. And it really is um, either team's game from here on. Well, Ryan Jan comes back into the attack for his final over and the penultimate one. And remember, he has one for six from his one over. And um, yeah, you see a lot of marshalling of troops across the ground, um, adding that extra pressure on the batsman to wait. It will be interesting to see how John bowls at Winston. Winston is a very tall, langy batsman. But he can muster that ball over the fence. Or the North Leeward Cricket Club. Anthony Cricket Club. One, could they come back for the second? No, will not have that. The <laughs> captain will take the responsibility. So he signaled to the dressing room that he he needs a bat. He needs a change of bat. So from the first shot, the bat needs to change. Is that? Yeah, he wasn't satisfied. That was a full toss and it kind of trickled down too long on. So he's thinking to himself, man, it has to be the bat's fault. Well, the bat. Can't be me. Well, well, <laughs> a very muscular fella. Um, Winston. Change of bat. Okay, is that one satisfying? Let's see. Okay, nice. Good cover jive. Here we go. Troops again been been marshaled across the ground. The right hander now is on strike. They're out. Long, long on, long off, mid wicket. Cover, deep cover, and cover point. Down to the deep point feeler. Get you for one. Just ball into the plan there, John. It's just what the Sulpan would need. Yes, ordinarily you would not say that it's a good delivery, but based on the feel that he has set, if he errs, then that is an error that he can owe in. If Handa comes back into strike, long on, long off, a mid -wicket, deep mid wicket, uh, cover, and a deep point. Right handers feel. By the circle. Down the ground, massively hit. I told you about the power of Winston Samuel if he gets all of this. And didn't he put it out the arena? Yes, that's a fantastic shot. He actually slug swept the medium pacer over straightish mid wicket for six. Well, whether the mid wicket was straight or slightly dent, he got it over the ropes, and that's important. That is important for the Botanical Garden Rangers. Now, the equation is looking much better. At 16, they need from some nine deliveries. What can the Botanical Garden Rangers do?
Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Yeah, and Ryan John was looking for the York on that occasion. But what I will say here is that Samuel looks to be very dangerous, especially if the ball is in his in his arc. So you would want to, to pull the length back probably just a little bit or execute your Yorker. Um, but those little pitched up deliveries um, in the slot, you will definitely um, put them away and not just to the boundary, but over the boundary. Well, the fans are out. The fans are out. They are supporting their team. Everybody shouting for different personnel on the field. Let's see what Samuel can do at this time. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. There we go. Yeah, the ladies are arguing. What is he doing? What is he doing? That's two dot balls, two crucial dot balls there for the Botanical Garden Rangers. And they could have scored from uh, the, re the, the serpent. They would look to enjoy that. Absolutely. Ball him! He's balled him. I believe that one was dragged on. And Samuel goes. And boy, the salt pan breakers making for the inroads. The Botanical Garden Rangers, they're 89 for eight. Yes, yeah. that one dragged on. Yes, and I gave him, I gave, I gave Ryan John two options. Back of a length or a Yorker length. He was attempting the Yorker there. He actually missed it probably by a few inches, but that's around the length where you'd want to be because Samuel doesn't, especially the line two, they don't want it to be too straight. Samuel doesn't look like if he wants to hit the ball through the offside or down the ground. He's very leg side in his approach, very bottom handed. And uh, that was a good delivery there by Ryan John. Well, that brings the end of the spell for John. He's finished at two for 14. Very good uh, bowling there in light of what have taken place so this is a final over the botanical garden rangers requiring some 16 from these last six deliveries uh the captain is back to bowl the last over well i would i i, I would tell you that the botanical gardens rangers are not out of it just yet because i noticed that razin brown has come to the crease and he can hit the ball a fair way as well so um they're still in the game but i think the salt pond breakers would be the happy of the two teams at well, this point get set to go if you're a salt pond breakers fan this is the last six balls you have to watch this game remember it's a top of the table clash and wherever you're viewing from this is the time you need to watch this this is the time you need to watch it it is keswick williams at the crease he's been there for some 11 deliveries he's gotten 16 that is the 16 that is needed now um, he doesn't have 11 balls to score 16. Here comes Dillon at the start of this over. Oh, pass the keeper coming down to the boundary and four. What a way to start for the Botanical Garden Rangers. Whether it is buys or runs, it is four. So run signal there by the umpire. Yes, it's so, Came off the inside edge there. You could see the deflection as he attempted that shot down the ground, Keswick. It was a slower delivery. And a 4 2 just boundary, but they will take it. 12 needed or 5, Kaznel. Two sixes. Can we go? So the equation is looking much easier, healthier now for the Botanical Garden Rangers. Let's see. Oh, into the ground. It's camper two for one. Don't. Arrow. Run out will be needed at this time. So Razim Brown will have to look to muscle one of this over the ropes, which will now bring the equation even much better. Exciting cricket here at the Adelsville playing field. And um, the VPL has a, a, a thing of carrying up your pressure and bringing it back down when it comes to these nail biting finishes. Well, I will say that so far this year, we have had quite a few close finishes and it's a credit to, to the, the tournament and the, the stature. It's, it's growing. And of course, the competitiveness of each side is being shown. So anybody can beat anybody on the day. Well, it has 11 runs to get the Botanical Garden Rangers. But I've never seen themselves in this position from their standpoint. A swing and a miss. So at crucial that ball... Had he got a hold of that, I would have gone to Beckway. 
What a swing. Yeah, that one, that one was actually there for the shot. Um, it was not a Yorker. Um, slightly slower delivery. It was actually in the slot. And he could have hit that straight down the ground. But probably trying to hit it just a little bit too hard. Here we go. So it's charged up again. It's ready. It connects. Can he pass? Passes the man at short fire. And he goes to the boundary. Four runs. My goodness me. So they are now into single figures. <laughs> My goodness me. What are we having here? What a game. What a game. My goodness me. A misfeel. How dare you? 98 for 8. And the feel is set. The feel is set for the slow delivery, which means that both fine leg and third man are up in the circle. But you have to also remember that even though the batsman can hit the ball big, he is still a number 10 batsman. And to me, it's more likely for him to get an edge than the middle. And uh, we saw already that came to, to fruition there. So let's see how he goes now. Seven from two. No ball. That should be a no ball. It's a free hit. It's a free hit. My goodness me. They're just one hit away. And it's a free hit, Alanson. The fans are out. The fans are out. What a cardinal sin that is. Yes, pressure building on the skipper here. Um, pressure building on the skipper here. Two deliveries left to get six runs. And it's actually a free hit now. So, um, Brown can know that even if he misses this one, whoever comes into bat after him has another chance with a six to win. My goodness me. How dare you, skipper? 99 for eight. The supporters of the... The salt and breakers are wondering what is going on. The botanical garden rangers fans, they are scampering all over the place. Free hit. He missed it. He missed the free hit. Look at this. How oh, dare you miss the free hit like that? How oh, dare you miss the free hit like that? So he's bold of the free hit. He cannot be given out because he's bold. However, he's now requiring one ball and to get six. He should have been able to get at least some sort of bat onto that delivery, Alanson. My goodness me. And Can we see this happening? And Six they, of the last ball. And they really should have attempted a buy of, of that delivery as well. To try to get the buy. Even Since he's a set batsman, 21 of 13. Probably he might say, well, I might be more able to hit a six of this last delivery. Well, he needs to back his strength because he's going against the win. So here we go. What's supposed to be the last delivery? Can he get it? He misses. And uh, that's it. The Sultan Breakers have kept it and they have won and have gone to the top of the table. <laughs> My goodness me, what an exciting day of cricket. What a game, what a game. The Sultan Breakers, they have won the game. And, and that's the value of experience. Johnson was under some severe pressure in that, the first half of that over after those boundaries. But those last two deliveries after the free hit, he really showed the value of experience, calmed himself, knew what he had to execute, and executed well in both, in both cases. And look at this delivery. Slower, Yorker. Very well bowled there by Dillon. And he was able to, to drag his team over the line then on that occasion. I know he would have been very disappointed after his first over went for 23 against Fletcher and, and against Salvan. But he, he's the one who is smiling now at the end of the innings. Congratulations to the, to the breakers and hard luck to the Rangers. Well, 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 who would have thought that we are seeing 99 for 9? The Botanical Garden Rangers have lost. The Southern Breakers are slow ball to end it. Razin Brown have no answer to that one. And um, boy, oh boy, the Southern Breakers, they are the victorious one. And they are at the top of the table, as we mentioned. The, the Botanical Garden Rangers will be somewhat disappointed uh, not reaching that total. And they have lost by six runs. My goodness. Yes, that was a very thrilling game. I, I, my co-commentator, Cardinal Morris, ever, Vicente, ever, 
Um, I could could hear the blood pressure rising from over here, um, a, a couple of meters away from him. But um, very good game. Another one of the close finishes here in the VPL edition number four, um, where we bring the vibe. And indeed, if no vibe had been here before um, some of these games that we are seeing now, well, the vibe has truly arrived. Oh, goodness me. I cannot believe. I cannot believe. But it is something that is seen live from the Arnesville playing field here. And um, just to bring you a summary of the game, it all started where the Salt Pond Breakers, they took fourth strike. And uh, Kaden Ned really took it out to them, to the Botanical Garden Rangers. And he set the momentum. And uh, Kaden Ned with a well-struck uh, well 63 from 21 deliveries was the highlight. But Winston Samuel, he was the highlight for the bowling there for the Botanical Garden Rangers with two for 10. But when the Botanical Garden Rangers got to the crease, 21 from Keswick from his 13 delivery proved not enough because they were only able to muster 99 for 9 when the Salmon Breakers, they end up winning by 5 wickets with Ke Joseph, Ken Joseph, Kensley Joseph, sorry, 3 for 13 of his 2. I believe that that was where it all went downhill for the, the Botanical Garden Rangers. And, and we saw at the end of the, the game, there was no point in the game when run scoring was extremely um, easy. The first over went for 23, and that was a very um, important over. But we also go back to the salt on breakers' innings. The innings of Kade Ned, and the momentum he gave initially in uh, that, um, that innings has come back now to be of value because we were thinking 104, they might have just gotten over that quite easily. But without that 63 from 104, um, that, that would have been a totally different innings in terms of its complexion. And so Ned would have to, you know, give himself a little pat on the back now and say, well, team, you have to thank me for giving you at least 104 to defend. Well, you see, it, it, it really, that, that's a very good point because when Ned left, it, it, there was much to to really talk about and um it was able uh, well a 14 by barnum was able to get them over to 104. so a well placed a well played knock by 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 ned about the the botanical garden rangers as you rightly said there was a seesaw in the run scoring and when just at the point when they thought that they had a partnership the salt and breakers came up with a wicket and um it really was devastating at the end for the botanical garden rangers and a lot of credit to kenzie joseph as well for his spell of three for 13 in two overs taking some very big wickets um key wickets of um of of fletcher of brown salvan brown and he also dismissed Karen Katoy. So taking some three, ma three massive scalps there for Joseph um, in his spell. So well done to him as well. And good support by Ryan John with his two for 14. So that's, we, that's all we have for today here at the, the VPL. Tomorrow morning, um, well, for, depending on where you are in the world, but 12 o'clock here at our um, St. Vincent and Grandin's local time, we will have match day five. And game number nine, we'll see the Fort Charlotte, we'll see the La Las Refray Hikers, sorry, taking on the Dark V Explorers. So the Hikers got their first win today. The Dark V Explorers won their last game after winning very convincingly in their first game. And that will be a very, very important fixture. Um, it will determine w w which one of those two teams find their way up into the middle of the table, so to speak. And the Fort Charlotte Strikers, Having not won a game as yet, they would want to do what the Last Refrain Hikers were able to do today, which is to um, come back and win their third game after losing their first two. And the Botanical